then you don't have an option but to comply. If you do not comply, it means that you do not agree with the degree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who revealed the Quran, who sent Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to inform you how he should be worshipped. You said to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you did not understand your, you know, your homework. Because if you do this by logic, the logic say that these three days, the fourth day is not part of the Eid. So we have to, we can, we can fast. So here, there is no mutaba. You clearly, unequivocally, intentionally contradict the text of the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who says that whatever I inform you to do something, then you do according to your ability, and whatever I forbids you from doing it, you have to stay away. So here, this fasting it comes in the category of what of the thing that Allah subhanahu wa taala forbids. Then you have to stay away from it. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخْذُوهُ Even though this comes in connection with the booty, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, tell Prophet sallallahu and his companion, you know, to expel these Yahudis from Medina, whatever they left behind was the booty. So people were not satisfied, you know, in terms of how much they were given by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? That is the historical, you know, reason behind the revelation of this ayah. But it is not confined only to this. But anything that you know, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say, do this. That what you have to grab. That what you have to do. That what you have to comply with. And whatever he says, stay away from me. And Allah says, Fantahu, stay away from me. This is, these two are amu. The first thing that whatever Prophet gives to us, we have to take it. It is amu min Allah. This is as wajib as you pray Salatul Dhuhr. This is as wajib as you pray Salatul Asr. This is as wajib as you give zakat. You go to Hajj. What is difficult to stay away from something or to comply with something that Allah said, do it. Which there is no ambiguity. He doesn't say, when the people say, that, okay, there is a different opinion, you know, there is a qawal and we don't have a clear text. Then you may have some loopholes, if you will to invade and do something that might not otherwise be allowed for you to do it. But if there is a text that is explicit in nature, that is understood by everybody, then what is the reason behind defining that order and doing whatever that you feel or you see fit? That is not how, you, how Islam works. Islam, that's called, this is an Iman. Iman is to believe whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. You believe it and you take it and you obey it unconditionally. When you do that, then you become a movement. In other words, you don't follow your own desire or your tradition or what your Imam or your sheikh or your community leader said, but you follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Whatever Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given to us, given to you, Allah said, Fakhudhu. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala famina Allahi al risala Wa mina al rasul al bala. Wa alayna eh? At tasmeh. 
Oh, at Taslim. So, Prophet Allah, Allah is the one who sent. Allah is the one who sent the prophets. He is the one who reveals the books. And it is wajib upon the prophet to convey what has revealed to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And upon you, it is a wajib to comply. Is to comply and say, Samina wa atana. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Inna ma qawla al-mu'minin an yaqu e ija ija du'u ila Allah an yaqulu Samina wa atana. This is the only thing, this is the only option for the a believer whenever you hear something from Allah and His Prophet that you say, we hear. Not only to hear, but what? We comply. We obey. We're going to do it. Regardless. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُضُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ أَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that ayah لَقَدْ كَانَ رَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةُ الْحَسْنَةِ You have an excellent example to emulate. You have an excellent model to follow. To emulate. But Allah said, Fi Rasulillah, in Rasul. If your father doesn't have the characteristics of Prophet Muhammad, if your father is not complying to the order, to do's and don'ts of the Quran and the Sunnah, Allah did not command you to follow your father. But Allah says you have an example, not just an example, but an excellent example on Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to emulate. But this example is for who? It's not for everybody. Everybody has his own model. If you ask these kids, who is your own model? They might say Major Jackson or uh, Major Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Somebody might say Oprah Winfrey or all these you know, stars. But if they ask you and I, who is our role model? We say Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because these are the ones that your success depends. These are the ones that you say in every salah that إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْ عَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ مَنِ الَّذِينَ أَنْ عَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ Those are the people that Allah has blessed. These are the things that you read in every salat. In other words, if you pray without freedom fighter, your salat is not going to be accepted. So you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to the path of those that Allah has bestowed His blessing upon them. Those are the people. Min al the Prophet. Min al wa Siddiqin wa Shuhada. The truthful one. The martyrs. And the Siddiqin wa Shuhada wa Salim. And the righteous people. These are the people that you follow. These are the people that you constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you follow their full steps. And yet, here Prophet Allah is telling you, don't do that, and you do the opposite. You either is you are you either ignorant or you are arrogant. Two things. If you don't know, then you are you are ignorant. But if you know and you insist in, on, on doing it, then you are arrogant. And Prophet Allah says, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من الكبر. That anybody who possess مثقال ذرة, something an equivalent to an arrow in weight, anybody who possess that out of arrogance, 
Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "You are not going to enter Jannah." And Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam defines for us what is arrogant. He says, "Come to us." He says, "Is to belittle people." He said to reject the truth and to belittle people, to consider people unimportant, not taking advice—I mean, advice—from people whenever they advise you, because you think you know everything, because you think you're smarter than them. So, if you have this kind of arrogance in your heart, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will never ever. Enter you in the jannah. So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to protect us from every form of arrogance. So here, promised Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Liman kana yarju Allah." This is only for those. This example in Prophet is only for those who have certainty that they are going to meet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And Who have a certainty of the day of Qiyamah? Man kana yarju Allah wa al-yawm al-akhir. That whatever they do in this world, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is going to reward them. If it is good, they will have good. If it is bad, they will have bad. So in this ayah that we just mentioned, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has Made it an explicitly clear to us that an al abda that a servant of him, ida arad al falah. If you want success, everybody wants success. That's why we come over here. That's why we go to school. That's why we are doing everything that we can in order to be successful in this life. That's why you sacrifice everything for your children so that they will be successful. So Allah will tell you if you want success in this world, well, after Fayyabari Alehi, then it is, it is for that person. And yet, asa bi Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you should emulate Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وَأَمَّا مَنْ تَرَكَ سُنَّةَ الْحَدِّ Anybody who leaves behind the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and he does not emulate him that person is من أهل النار that person is from the dwellers of Jahannam may Allah say of us will hear the law Imam al-Bukhari narrated in his sahih That Abu Huraira is the one who narrated the hadith from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this hadith was in Sahih Bukhari. That Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Kullu ummati yadkhulun al-jannah illa man aba." Everybody in my ummah, they have a possibility to enter jannah except those who refuse to enter jannah. As long as you do not refuse to enter Jannah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says you have a clear path to enter Jannah. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says this, the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they say to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who refuses to enter Jannah, O oh, Prophet of Allah, O oh, Messenger of Allah, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "Man ata ani dakhal Jannah." Anyone who follows me, anyone who obeys me, anyone who emulate me, that person will enter Jannah. Dakhal al Jannah. He doesn't even say that ya dukhul al Jannah. He says dakhal al Jannah. Let the hakuku uku in. Because this is something that is going to happen. When something is certainly is hundred plus ten percent. Certainty that is going to happen in the Arabic language. They will put it in the past tense. Like Allah said, "Qad aflah al mu'minun," the successful are the believers. Who are those? And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "These Allah dinahum fi salatihim khashiun." 
those who embody these characteristics, those people, they are already successful. Those people are the people who are going to inherit Jannah al Firdaus. So here, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Man ata ani dakhal al Jannah, Waman asani, anyone who opposes me, anyone who disobeys me. You don't see Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell you, hey, do this, and tell you, no, I'm not going to do it. He don't see it. But whenever a hadith, an authentic hadith, is rehearsed, is recited to you, that this is what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, fill the gap, for instance, and then you refuse to fill the gap because you are arrogant. They say, step up, go to the second line because there's a gap over here. And then you still, you know, lagging behind. Somebody had to literally push you to fill that gap. You are defining the order of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who says, فَعَتِمُوا صَفَّ الْأَوَّلْ فَالْأَوَّلْ that whenever we have rose, he says, always the first self must be completed, then the self that comes after it, then the one that comes after that. So if you are commanded, or if you are ordered, if you are suggested by somebody to fill the gap in the first line or the second line, you shouldn't hesitate to do it. And Prophet said, وَلِينُوا بِأَيْدِي إِخْوَانِكُمْ be lenient, be gentle, be light in the hands of your brothers whenever they want you to fill a gap. Do it. If you cannot do it voluntarily, if you are suggested to do it, if someone suggests to you to do it, you have to do it. So if you do that, then you obey Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if you refuse to do it, then what? You disobey Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And guess what? You're going to go to Jahannam. You refuse to enter Jahannam. They say, this is how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed. You say, no, I'm not going to pray that way. I'm going to pray the way that I have seen my father praying, or my grandfather, or the Imam of our village. And you insist on doing that. The thing that you inherit from your father or your forefather. And you define the order of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then you disobey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then you're going to go to Jahannam. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Waman Asani, anyone who opposes me, who disobeys me, who refuses to follow my order, that person will go to Jahannam. It couldn't be clear. So that's why whenever we hear an order from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to comply wholeheartedly without any hesitation. So here Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Man ata'ani dakhla al-jannah wa man asa'ani faqad aba. So Sunnah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah is a rahmatul lil-alameen. It is a mercy not only for mankind and jinkind, but for the whole alamin, creation. Because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is an advocate for everybody, for everything that you can think of. Even the environment, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advocate for the environment. Anything that is not eco-friendly, Islam forbids it. Subhanallah. Even Jihad Prophet used to tell his companion, don't chop off any tree. No matter what happened to you, how these people exacerbated you, you should not go and chop off their tree to destroy their crops, their trees, their fruit. You cannot do that. Not even mention an animal. Even when you kill an animal, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَإِجَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَعَسْنُ قَتْلَ وَإِجَا جَبَحْتُمْ فَعَسْنُ ذَبْحَ That whenever you have to kill, even an animal, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you have to do it in a gentle way. 
That's why one day Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has seen a man. He had, you know, a bird in his hand. Some people say a chicken. And there's another, you know, a, a, there's a, a knife in his hand. He was trying to sharp up the knife. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, what are you doing? You killed him twice already. That is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَقَدِ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْرَةٌ حَسَنٌ Meaning that if you have to kill an animal, don't let him see the knife. Hide it from him, from it. Because they know what is going to happen to them. That is an animal. How about human being? How about the human being? Those people who are committing atrocities against people purely based on the hatred that they have toward these people. Allah says, Are you going to force, compel people that they must be Muslims? It is not up to you. It is up to Allah to guide or not to guide. Your only job is to make da'wah. That is your job. That is the prophetic tradition to make the da'wah. And that's what we all should be doing. That is the path of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advocated for. That what he fought for. For, entire his, for his entire life. And if you want to go to Jannah, then you have to follow that full steps of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that I have left two things with you. That is the Quran and the Sunnah of His. The Quran and the Sunnah. As long as you hold into these two things. You will never ever go astray. No matter how, what country you live in, you are living in. No matter what environment that you are living in. No matter what fitna, calamity descends. As long as you hold into the book of Allah, you adhere to the teaching. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to the book of Allah and the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam you will never go astray this is a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walidha faqad akkada an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wasallam ala tamassuk bi sunnatihi because of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has made it categorically clear and empathically that in the uqu il firqa that whenever there's a division and there is difference of opinion Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said we should follow his sunnah in the hadith of Ibn Musari radiallahu anhu that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says innahu man ya'ish minkum Ba'di. That anyone who lives, anyone who lives long after me, فَسَيَرَ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا You will certainly see a lot of controversies, a lot of difference of opinion, a lot of changes. When that happened, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us a blueprint or a roadmap, if you will, to follow. He says, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةُ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, adhere to my sunnah and the sunnah of the khulafa al-rashidin. The four guided khulafa al-mahdiyin. Those who are guided, addu alayha bin nawadin, and hold into them with your teeth. 
that is a meta metaphor so here this is what i was referring to prophet sallallahu alaihi says addu alayha he doesn't say addu alayhima bin nawadi because if he say addu alayhima bin nawadi then it would have been assumed or would have been understood that they are two sunnas the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sunnah of the companion the the, 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 the four rightly guided khulafa but prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says alayha he make it one sunnah meaning that this the companion this khulafa they don't have a different sunnah other than the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there might be a sunnah that was dead that was not practiced that people were not aware of it and they revived the sunnah and then you may think that that is a new sunnah but it is not because anything that is done that is not sanctioned by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that will be here anything that had been initiated fabricated or introduced that's called sunnah a newly thing that is the definition of a barrier that to oppose allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma kunt bid'an min ar-rusul i am not the first messenger so al bid'ah is what to do something which has not been done before so here prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says stick to my sunnah adhere to my sunnah and the sunnah of khulafa ar rashidin so it should not be understood that this khulafa they have their own sunnah other than the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam issue warning he just said wa iyyakum wa muhdatsatul umur i warn you against newly invented matters the thing that have been introduced by people don't do them don't come to them fa inna kullu bid'atin dalala why because every newly invented matter everything that is introduced into this day no matter how you try to verify it, it is called bid'ah and every bid'ah is rejected qala ash-shaykh ibn uthaymin he says wa sunnati alayhi salatu wa salam hiya tariqatihi allati yamshi alayha aqidatan wa khuluqan wa amalan wa ibadatan wa khayr dhalika that when you say the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it goes beyond what you think it encompasses or it entails the aqidah okay in terms of how you think about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay the aqidah to you know tawhid al-rububiyyah tawhid al-uluhiyah tawhid al-asma'i wa sifat it encompasses all these branches of tawhid that you have to know that allah is the one who create allah is the one who legislate allah is the one who wazza allah is the one who you know takes away allah is the one who gives allah is the one who is in control and so on and so forth aqidatan whatever happen it is not out of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know ability whatever happen it is the it is from allah allah let it happen without allah knowledge without allah permission it will never ever takes place so in other word you have to have allah in your hearts that believe the existence of allah that allah is the one who controls everything that you know and you don't know aqidatan wa khulqan anything that you do how you behave how you interact everything has to be in line with the sunnah when you do that that also you are following the sunnah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whatever you do your deeds has to be in line with prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam your ibadat your worship cannot contradict the way the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has done his 
Whenever we have to judge, we have to judge according to the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If we are indeed a believer, Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "Fala wa rabbika la yuminuna hatta yuqtimuka fi ma shajara baynahu." Allah said, "There's no way." Those people can't be a believer until, unless and until they make you judge whatever happened between them. Prophet was there, but right now Prophet is not here. But theoretically, he is here. The Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad is with us. So whatever problem we have, we have to go to the Sunnah. How does you know the Sunnah say? How does the Sharia say about this? And Subhanallah, brothers, we have some some problems in our you know our households or in our society, and we have a clear solution in the Book of Allah, but we don't go there. Because that doesn't, you know, go with what we want. For instance, the Hadana. If someone has a problem with his wife, how, who should have the custody of the children? Allah has said it very explicitly clear in Surah Al-Talaq. Who's supposed to have the Hadana, the custody? But instead of going into this, what do we do? We go and hire lawyers. We file petition in the court. And subhanAllah, we spend a lot of money going back and forth. How many days you have to miss your job? How, many, how much money you have to pay for that, you know, for that uh, lawyer? And you abandon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are Muslim. You don't have any dispute between you and a kafira who you marry, but you and this sister, you all Muslims. And subhanallah, you say Quran is a word of Allah. It contains every single problem that we have in our society. Whatever problem that we have, Allah said, you cannot be, by no means that you can be a believer until you go back to that. And yet you have an audacity to stay away from that and go and spend thousands of thousands of dollars to hire a lawyer so that he can, you know, represent you in the court. Who's supposed to have the custody of the children? So brothers, we have to think about the consequences of our actions. Because if you, if we turn our backs away from the Quran, we are not implementing what the Quran says. We are not following the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu we take the Quran and the Sunnah away from our life. Wallah, we can have ma'ishat and danka. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Woman arada and dhiki. Anybody who turns away from my remembrance. What is the remembrance of Allah? Is Al Quran. You don't read the Quran. You don't care about the do's and don'ts, the rules and regulations of the Qur'an. Whatever problem you have, you would rather go and solve it different way, other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah said, You will have such a catastrophic life. You will have a life which is going to be very, very hard on you. 
First of all, if you don't have money to hire a lawyer, you will have to borrow money. If you don't be careful by going back and forth in this court, you may be fired from your job. These are the consequences of turning away. In this world, in the day of Qiyamah, Allah will ask you, don't you, didn't you have the Quran with you, that you could have solved this problem, that you could have used this money, that you could have used that time by going back and forth. Didn't you have a Quran? Why didn't you make the Quran? Didn't you read the ayah when I said, Fala wa rabbika la yu'ayun? Tayu hakimu ka fi ma hadara baynaw. Summa la yadiru fi anfusim haradam. Mimma qadir wa yusallimu taslima. Are you blind from this ayah? What are you going to say to Allah? You can say, oh Allah, there was no prophet. Prophet Allah wasn't was there. And Allah said, didn't you have a Quran? Didn't you have the Sunnah? Didn't you have scholars that you could have asked them? What is the remedy? What is the solution of your problem? Why didn't you go and solve your problem? What are you going to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You can say that I prefer that law over your law. <coughs> and Lisan al Hal, you are saying that. You are not explicitly saying that, but you are implicitly saying that these laws are far better than the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're gonna have a problem brothers and sisters so Allah says by no means they can be a full believer until they make you judge between them whatever problem whatever problem Allah said we have not left anything out in the Quran Whatever you need, Wallah, you will find it. And it won't cost you anything. Ma farratna fil kitab min shay. And Allah says, Summa la yabidu fi amasim haraja. They will not have any doubt, any hesitation, any restriction or any hatred or, you know, the test in their hearts. In other words, whatever they find in the Quran and the Sunnah, they will more than happy to take it. This is the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sunnah to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hiya Najat, Liman Arad Allah, or Liman Arad Allah Najatu, Min Al Khilafat will be there. Anybody that Allah wants him to be safe from all these disputes, all this bidia, he will follow the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, brothers, we gotta go really quick. Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu. We all know who is Abdullah ibn Abbas. He says, You ship and the Nazala Aleikum Hidaratan Minas Sama. A whole Kala Rasulullah, he saw the law who Ali was Salam, but a whole noon Kala Abu Bakin wa Umar. This is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. I mean, Abdullah ibn Abbas. He was said to his contemporaries that, Do you want, oh, it is image. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend a punishment upon you. Why? Because I am saying, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is what Allah says, and this is what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and you are saying, this is Abu Bakr said this, Umaru said this. In other words, you have preference 
over the word of Allah and word of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you do, then the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is imminent. So here, we have to follow the text of Allah. If there is no text, then you can quote Aqwalu Nukulama. If someone says to you, Qala Allah, or Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the case is closed. There is no litigation. You can litigate that argument by quoting what Usaymin says, or what Bumbai says, or what Albani said. And we have this problem in our time. There are people who call themselves Albaniyun. So whatever you say, they say Albani says. It's like Albani is a prophet of Allah. Whatever they say, they say Usaymin says. Or Sari al Fawzan. These are called Ulama'u ulama Rabbaniyin. They are authentic scholars. These scholars, they follow strictly the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For them, whatever is said, Professor, that's what they are to. So why would you stay away? Why would you turn your back on the Quran, the clear text of the Quran and the Sunnah, and you try to call what Albani or what Usaymin or Bumbayat or any other scholar says. When you do that, what Ibn Abbas said will apply to you. That the punishment is imminent. It is very close that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a punishment to you. So that's why you say Usaymin, he says there were two individuals who had an argument regarding the Salat al-Taraweeh. One of them who say that the Salat al-Taraweeh is the last one who is in Rakia, in 23 Rakia. The other said the Sunnah is the last one. The Sunnah is 13 or the last one or 11. فقال الأول للثاني هذه سنة الخليفة عمر بن الخطاب أنها ثلاث وعشرين. The first one said to the other one that this is the Sunnah of Umar bin Khattab that the صلاة التراوي is twenty three ركعات. وقال أمرنا باتباع الخلفاء الراشدين and he said we have been commanded to follow the Sunnah. Of the Khulafa Rashidin, Umar ibn Khattab. You read and you are in the Hada Sunnah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wants to oppose this with the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fakal al Akhar Sunnah al Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Sunnah of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Proceed of any other sunnah. Hada in Saha and Umar and Naha Salat and Waishim. Even that is authenticated that this is from Umar. Ma and Lemi Saha and Umar be a Sahil Asani. Even though what is authentically narrated from Umar, Radiallahu Anhu, is that. The Salat al-Tawih is in the Ashra Rakyat, in the 11 Rakyat. So what he's trying to say is here, whenever you have a text from the Quran or from the Sunnah, you don't have an alternative. You have to follow it, period. You don't have any ifs or buts. Don't try to find a way. 
to follow to pursue your desire رواه البخاري ومسلم في صحيحهما عن انس رضي الله عنه قال جاء ثلاثة نفر الى بيوت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ليسالوا عن عبادته انس بن مالك he said three people came to, to the household of prophet muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to ask them about the worship of prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the dedication of prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم how he support how he was worshiping allah when he is at home فلما اخبروا بعبادته when they were informed about the worship of prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فانهم تقلوها so it's like they think that that was inconsequential فقالوا ان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه وما تاخر he says that prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم all his sins are forgiven فقال احدهم one of them says اما انا فاقوم الليل me from now on I am going to stand the entire night. I will never sleep at night praying to Allah. Wala anam, I am not going to sleep. Wa amma al-akhar fa qala amma ana fala adjawwal an-nisa. The other one says but me I will stay away from women. I am not going to marry because women are headed. They will occupy your time and your time you don't have enough time to worship Allah so I would just be single so I can devote all my time in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a good intention right now wa qala thalis the third one says wa amma ana fa asumu nahara wa la after the other one says I am going to fast forever as long as I am alive. I will fast every day. فجاء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فبلغ ذلك. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came and it was the mother was narrated to him. فقال Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says انتم القائلون كذا وكذا you are the one who says such and such قالوا نعم they say yes we are the one who say that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say اما والله اني اخشاكم لله I swear by Allah I fear Allah the most more than you guys do واتقاكم and I stay away and I fear Allah I stay away from the prohibition of Allah more than you do walakinni aqum wa usalli wa anam but me if you want to follow me if you want to go to Jannah if you want to stay away from hellfire this is the blueprint this is what I do this is what Allah wants me to do that aqum i pray i pray some portion of the night wa anam and i also sleep as well wa asum i fast some days wa after and some days i do not fast wa atajawwal nisa and i also marry women this is my sunnah this is my way of life this is the way that allah want me to lead my life and this is what you as well supposed to lead your life from raghiba sunnati one thing i will tell you guys no matter how or what you think about the way that i i am conducting by that because i am the one who inform you about allah you didn't know who allah was 
You didn't know what was Islam. I am the one who Allah sent me to you to inform you what Allah wants. So this is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. This is my sunnah. This is my methodology. فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي I am not going to compel you to do what I do. If you want to do whatever you want to do, that's up to you. If you want to fast the entire, your, your entire life, that's up to you. If you want to stand out the entire night, that's up to you. If you want to stay away and remain single for the rest of your life, that's up to you. But one thing I'm telling you, this is my way. And anybody who dislikes, anyone who dislikes my sunnah, anyone who abandons my sunnah, anyone who thinks my way of life is not the correct way, Falaisa Mili, you are not part of me. In other words, if you want to be closer to Allah, it is not the way that you do will take you to Jannah. You can just come here and start with Isha A4 Rakyat and say, you know what, let me make six seconds. I think six seconds is better than four. Because the more I pray, the more reward I will get. And you say, you know what, let me make six. When you do that, is your slot accepted? No. Because there's a limit. Okay, there's a way that Allah said, pray four, you have to pray four. So this is the clear path. This is my path to Jannah. Anybody who think this is not enough for him to follow, then you can do whatever you see fit. But one thing I tell you, you're not gonna go to Jannah because you disobey me. For man atani, dakhla Jannah. For man asani, dakhla nar. Very simple. So this is what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell them. That this is my way. If you follow this, then you will have a success. You will have a hope. You will have a clear path to Jannah. But if you deviate from my Sunnah, thinking that that is not enough, then you can do whatever you want. So this is the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is from an Raghiba and Sunnati Fale Samini. Anybody who detests, who dislikes my Sunnah, you are not part of our community. If you are not part of the Muslim community, then you are part of what? The Kufar community. Who is your messenger? Shaitan. Then you are following Shaitan. Because Shaitan is the one who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's way is the way that takes you into Jannah by opposing it. Any bit, it will take you into hell fire. That is the statement of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One day Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was traveling. Okay? And people were fasting. And he told them to break their fast. It was, he was informed that people were fasting. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to break their fast. There were some people who insisted in fasting, just like the Ayam Tashrif. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, Ulaika al Usatu, Ulaika al Usatu, Ulaika al Usatu. Those are the disobedient one. Those are the disobedient one. Those are the disobedient one. Because they oppose my order. I tell them to break their fast, and they didn't break their fast. 
So, one more hadith, then we conclude. Rawal Imam Muslim fi sahihi an Salmad ibn al-Akwai radiyallahu anhu qal akala rajlun inna nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi shamali This companion narrated the hadith that there was a man who was in at the presence of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his left hand I want you to listen attentively to this hadith because there are people, subhanallah, and I have noticed this in the, you know, in, in Ramadan, during the Ramadan, there are people who eat with their, with their left hand, who drink with their left hand. When you tell them, they don't even look at you. They think that you, who you, who you, who you think you are. You can tell me how, even how to eat? They are arrogant. So hear what the Prophet says to him. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to him, could be a meaning. Eat with your right hand. Very simple, very direct. Fakal, the man said, La astate. He said, I cannot do that. Not because he had a problem with his right hand, but he was adamant to comply with the order of Prophet He was arrogant. He didn't want to comply. And Prophet said to him, last attack, may you not be able to eat with your right hand. <coughs> and what happened, he said, Ma manahu there was nothing wrong with his right hand to eat from it, except the arrogance. He was arrogant. That's why he refused to eat with his right hand after he had been informed by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what was the result? It was a cataclysmic consequence. I say, فَمَا رَفَعَهَا إِلَى فِيهِ From that point on, this man was not able to take, to raise his right hand to his mouth. He said, لَا أَدْرِ أَبُوْ تَلِيَتْ يَدَهُ بِالشَّلَلْ فَلَمْ يَسْتَتِي أَنْ يَرْفَعَهَا إِلَى فِيهِ This man hand may have been paralyzed because he openly opposed the order of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And lastly, brothers, in conclusion, if someone tells you, brother, please don't think with your left hand, and you say no, you have to take a heed. Because what happened to this man it could happen to you. It doesn't matter whether you hear straight from the mouth of Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam or it was conveyed to you by someone else that tells you to comply, to do something that Islam commands you to do. So if you openly oppose that, because you think you know better, because you think that that person shouldn't tell you because you know more than him, or you are more intelligent than him, then you have to be very careful. Least something like this will happen to you. Be just about eating, think about that. It is not about salad. It is not about fasting, it's not about making hype, it is not about any other thing but eating. He just refused to follow the order of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. On a small thing like this, eating, how about salat? How about if someone tell you, hey, this is not the way that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to pray. And he has a clear text 
a proof, a dalil to show you that this is the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to pray. And you refuse to do that. That's why Maliki Bun, Bun, uh, Bun Anas, one day he was in Medina, a man came to him. He said to Malik, where should I assume the Hiram? And Malik appointed the place where she's supposed to you know, start. He said, no, I am going to go farther away from there so that I will have more distance from there to Kaaba. Because the more I do that, the more reward I will get. Malik said, I fear a fitna for you. And he said, that fitness is what? It's a kufu. Wallahi, if we openly oppose the order of Allah, the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you don't be careful, you're going to be a kafir at one point in your life. That's what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said. He says, the fitna here, the Mufassirin, they say, the fitna that is mentioned here is al kufur because as long as you continue to oppose the order of Allah, your heart will be sealed and you will become a kafir and you know, you're not even aware of it. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us Amen. and to make us adhere to the teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is called At-Tamassuk bil Kitab wa Sunnah. When you do that, you bridge the gap. That's what this whole program is all about is to make sure that we follow what we proclaim that we are following. That we bridge the gap, we don't do anything that put us farther away from the teaching of the Quran and the Sunnah. That we should not follow our tradition, that we should not follow our, you know, so you who are not following the teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that we should not follow our desires, that we should strictly follow what Allah subhanahu wa taala says, no matter who says that. A truth was accepted by Shaitan. I mean, from Shaitan. So if a Muslim tell you something that this is the part of the thing, whether you know it and you forget to do it. Oh, you don't know it at all. Don't be arrogant. Do it. When you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will warn you. If you don't do it, then you have to fear that something that happened to that man, that his hand was paralyzed, that deed will be paralyzed. Meaning that you're going to be a casual if you don't be careful at some point of your life. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us adhere and to hold fast to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana atina fi dunya santan wa fi'a wa ta'ala wa Rabbana la tuju qulubana ba'da in hadaytana wa ablana min ladunka amtan innaka antal wahab. Allahumma akshina la min qashatika ma ta'kulu bihi bayna na bayna ma shadi. Wa min ta'atika ma tuballagina bihi jannata. Wa min al-yaqini ma tuhawbili bihi alayna misaib al-dunia. Wa matina Allahumma bi asma'ina wa absarina wa kuwatina. Abadan ma abqaytana. Wa al-hulwaratha minna.